I do love this herb cutter. It looks sort of medieval, but uh, it's Victorian, I think. And uh, I've had it a good few years, but uh, never included it in a painting before. When I'm putting together a, a composition for a still life, I always try to come up with objects that relate to each other, not just random odd objects, but uh, something that tells a story. So, I and mean, I found this lovely bunch of garlic down at the, uh, the local deli. And it gave me an idea for a painting. Like it preparing for a, for a meal, for the evening meal. Um, and just laying out all the, the items to be prepped on the, the kitchen table. It's always quite exciting making those first marks for a new painting. Uh, on a pristine, smooth white panel like this. These wooden panels that I work on, they're, uh, they're made of plywood and uh, they've got a very smooth coating of white gesso, uh, and which is actually perfect for capturing all those, those tiny details and, uh, and using a very tiny brush, which I often do. I work straight onto the, uh, to the wooden panel. Um, and at this stage, I'm mainly establishing tonal value. Um, so I'm not too worried about the colours. Um, although I do get as close as I can, but without agonising over the exact matches of the subject. A lot of the objects in my paintings have come from, uh, from my favourite pastime, which is browsing around charity shops and uh, second-hand shops. And in fact, that's where I found this, this lovely bone-handled knife. And in fact, I sometimes think if I wasn't an artist, I'd be an antique dealer. My mind, I wouldn't probably wouldn't be any good, I wouldn't part with anything. Look those stripes in the red onion when you, when you cut it. Actually, adding this lemon was a very important part of the composition. So it draws the eye and, uh, and also it's a perfect foil for the splatter of blue on that uh, pot that's holding the, the basil. So these are disposable palettes. So when the paints are past the best, I just tear off the sheet and start again. So this for me is the best bit. This painting this lemon. So uh, this bright zingy yellow right in the centre. I really wanted to save this till last. The oil paints I use are water soluble. Um, I, I do love the smell of traditional oils, but I'm in my studio for like 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and I find you can have too much of a good thing. Plus, um, being water-based, they are a little kind on the, the brushes which I use, which are essentially watercolour brushes. Still more interested in capturing the, the, the tonal values and uh, defining the shapes, um, but uh, nonetheless, it's still such a pleasure adding those, those that's a bright yellow. I love lemons, they're a great subject. It's just something I keep returning to. I always think if you, just one lemon or two lemons, just put a lemon in a painting, it just uh, provides that splash of bright yellow colour. Uh, and I think it brings any painting to life. You know, the centrepiece of my paintings is often a, a herb in an old clay pot. Um, but sometimes I, I put it in like a, a gardening setting, as I have done with this this herb. Um, but I do often, but I do often return to this, uh, this idea of a, a, a kitchen motif. Um, the items laid out, ready to be made into a meal that evening. It's uh, the idea of a, a kitchen table or a kitchen shelf or a chopping board. And onions and garlic. I just love them. There's, there's no two onions, no two garlics that are the same. Sometimes I actually look up a recipe and uh, select the ingredients and uh, lay them out. And I uh, quite often sneak a think of lemon or two into the composition as well. So just starting to block in the background. Um, and here that I've chosen that, uh, that sort of light grey blue, uh, which goes perfectly with the, the, the peeling paint on that sort of rustic kitchen table. And, uh, and of course it makes the yellow of that lemon really pop out. 
In other words, it gives me a chance to use a big brush at last. It's actually very important in the background. It's, uh, it sort of gives the, the painting the light and, and atmosphere. It actually defines the space in which uh, everything sits. That little shadow on the, the left there just, um, just helps to balance the composition and uh, makes the items on that extreme left of the painting sort of jump out a bit and uh, gives a bit of uh, contrast. Incidentally, most paintings such as still life and portraits that are made in the studio direct from their subjects, uh, it will employ a light source coming from the left. Um, and the simple reason is that most artists are right-handed, so light coming from the right would mean they're drawing or painting hand, or working the, in the shadow that, that's cast. Um, but at this stage I'm not working directly from the subject, so the light in the studio is bright, uh, but it's diffused and it's perfect for painting. In fact, I'm actually painting just below a skylight, which uh, also softens any cast shadows. I have hundreds of brushes, uh, and they all have a job to do, but, but most, of the paint, most of my paintings are done with just one particular brush, which is a, uh, a number one sable bright. Uh, but they don't last long at their, their best, so you know, maybe a few days. Um, but when they start to go, I don't, don't throw them away, because um, old brushes can, can be used for, for various things that a new brush is not necessary for. Uh, but to avoid, to avoid a new brush getting lost amongst all the older brushes when I put it down, I add a band of masking tape to mark, to mark which one is the new one. Uh, but that, that in itself can be quite confusing, so I, I vary the pattern. Uh, I just have to remember the, the current pattern, that's all. So now with the painting almost finished, I can take a, a brand new brush, brand new tiny little brush, and add those little dots and dashes, and low lights and highlights, the little touches that, that add definition and, and clarity. So I'm always aiming for, for an element of trompe l'oeil, and uh, at this stage, uh, this stage can really sort of help to create that illusion, like give the impression that you could reach into the picture plane and actually touch something, perhaps, perhaps push that knife back that is balancing <laughs> precariously on the edge of that table. So now the paint is finished, and uh, you can see here how it's changed since the, uh, the, I finished the blocking in state. I always find my paintings the same way, I'm, my signature hasn't changed over the years. Um, I was actually taught to write in Italian at primary school, and uh, that's remained my handwriting style. So when it came to signing my very first painting, it seemed natural to use my, uh, my Italian handwriting, uh, and it hasn't changed since. I've always stuck with the same style of frame for my paintings. This deep black moulding, I find it goes with most, most styles of decor, uh, traditional or contemporary. And it's also quite deep, which I feel separates the painting off from its surroundings. And uh, just remain to deliver it to the gallery, um, just in time for Chelsea. Um, and, I, and I love this each year, the Gladwell and Patterson Gallery, they always exhibit at the Chelsea Flower Show. Uh, in fact, it's become an institution, and uh, for almost 15 years now, they've been inviting me to come along to paint a still life on their stand, um, which is, is great. I love it. I, I get there early before the public allowed in. Uh, I get to have my own private view of the gardens. Uh, then I, I set up a still life and uh, just spend the rest of the day at my easel. Uh, I don't always get a lot of painting done. I'm, uh, I'm mostly chatting to people, but uh, that's such a change from being all on my own in my studio.